हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर हिमांशु कानपाल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इंग्लिश गवर्नमेंट एम एस कॉलेज फॉर वीमेन बीकानेर टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द टर्म रेनेसेंस व्हिच इज रिलेटेड टू द सोशल एंड कल्चरल हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंग्लैंड फ्रॉम द एक्सेशन ऑफ द क्वीन एलिजाबेथ टू द थ्रोन टू द डेथ ऑफ जेम्स फर्स्ट दिस पीरियड इज नोन एज द गोल्डन पीरियड इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर the period extends from 1558 the year when queen elizabeth ascended on the english throne to 1625 the year of the death of james i during this period literature reached to a great height so this period is is known as renaissance which means new awakening and the revival of learning the renaissance is a french word which means rebirth revival or reawakening the term first has been used by the french historian jules michelet in his history de france in 1855 so by virtue of its wonderful fertility and of the variety and splendor of its production this period this time ranks as one of the greatest in the periods of the world's literature the renaissance was both a revival of ancient classical mythology literature culture and as well as a reawakening of the human mind after the long sleep of the dark middle ages to the wonder the glory and the beauty of the human body and world of nature so the word the word means the word renaissance means it is uh, used specifically to denote the great spiritual and mental rebirth marked which marked the end of middle age and the beginning of the modern world it was a rediscovery by mankind of himself and of the world so if we have a look at the uh, look at its history it began in italy as early as the 14th century with petrarch and boccaccio and others and was greatly stimulated by the fall of constantinople in 1453 and by the invention of printing in germany about this very time and the great discoveries of scientists and navigators which followed here we are going to have a look at its history where it started from so renaissance had its birth in italy from italy remember that it had its birth in italy from italy it came to germany and france then to england petrarch and boccaccio they were the italian writers they had a tremendous interest in the past achievements of their country the relics of ancient buildings the beautiful statues simultaneously another event took place for the revival of ancient learning it was in 1453 constantinople a place named constantinople the last stronghold of greek language and greek culture fell to turks the last stronghold the place constantinople it fell to turks they attacked the place the greek and latin scholars they were left with no choice with their precious manuscripts with their precious works fled from there and found welcome in italy particularly in florence and at that time petrarch and boccaccio they were um, writing they were composing their literature the italians who had only heard of homer of plato and aristotle were anxious to know them first okay greeks when they were attacked by the turks they fled with their works to italy and they were wholeheartedly welcomed 
had now satisfied their but so the italians now satisfied their curiosity at the feet of the refute scholars this rediscovery and reinterpretation of antiquity gave birth to a new culture that is of italian humanism so humanism broadly defined as the master key for understanding of the civilization of renaissance humanism applies to the revival of classical literature and was so called by its leaders following the example of trark because they held that that the study of classic literary humanists is that more human writings rather than the old theology so there are several aspects of the renaissance it's influenced so by the invention of printing in germany about this very time and the great discoveries of scientists and navigators which followed its influence reached england as late as the last years influence of the italian humanism as late as the last years of the 15th century and the opening years of the 16th century the renaissance thus enlightened the human mind engulfed in the darkness of middle ages all round victory of the queen queen elizabeth decay of churches bad days for feudalism discovery of gunpowder discoveries through navigation of indians and the influence of scholars coming back from greece and italy were the factors responsible for the renaissance in england so there are several aspects of the renaissance the new learning is one the others are reformation simultaneously there is other moment going on that is of reformation the growth of nationalism the exploration of the world and intimately connected with the renaissance are the invention of printing and the spread of education all the things are related to each other beginning of the modern world we must carefully here avoid the error of limiting what is to be understood by the term renaissance it is not to be identified for instance only with the new learning but it embraces that and all the changes which were brought about it it is the spirit which was the motive power behind them all so at that time drama was the main poetic form which flourished during the elizabethan period the period in english literature generally called the renaissance is usually considered to have begun a little before 1500 and to have lasted until the commonwealth interregnum that is 1649 to 1660 it consisted of the early tudor age 1500 to 1557 the elizabethan age 1558 to 1603 so here the elizabethan age was an era of peace of economic prosperity of stability of liberty and of great exploration in the age of elizabeth all doubt seems to vanish from english history the jacobian age that is that uh, is from 1603 to 1625 and the caroline age that lasted from 1625 to 1642 the early english the early period english author felt the impact of classical learning and of foreign literature together with some release from church authority this was largely due to the queen's influence the new world was transforming england into a trading nation during the reign of elizabeth england became a world power its drama and its poetry attained great heights in the work of such writers as edmund spenser philip sidney christopher marlowe and william shakespeare by the time that james first came to the throne a reaction was beginning to set in
reaction was beginning to set in expressed through a growing cynicism classical dissatisfaction a tendency towards melancholy and decadence now the world now the england is not the same as of the time of elizabeth elizabeth inspired all her people with her unbounded patriotism under the under her administration the english national life progressed leaps rather than by slow historical points of its development the influence of renaissance reached england at the end of 15th century so but when we reach the age of james i we do not find the things that gained popularity during the time of elizabeth uh, during the time of queen elizabeth so now it seems to be uh, the environment is going to be seems to be of the classical dissatisfaction there is a tendency towards sadness towards melancholy and decadence as the conflict of puritan and cavaliers grew in intensity these elements grew also elizabethan age was the era of peace and prosperity but now there is kind there is a kind of dissatisf- dissatisfaction that is growing among the public and by the time charles lost his head the puritanism that was itself a major outgrowth of the intense individualism of the renaissance had spelled an end to most of its literary greatness yet oliver cromwell had as latin secretary the last of the great english renaissance figures john milton who was to produce his greatest work in the hostile world of restoration foremost among the factors that shaped the renaissance in england were the tudor monarchs themselves like henry 7th henry 8th queen elizabeth and establishment of printing press in 1476 by william caxton at the westminster so influence of renaissance on the elizabethan age we can see there was a uh, there was an environment of religious toleration the there were number of translations there was social peace and contentment adventures and the spirit of uh, exploration italianism there was an influence of humanism the invention of the printing press influence of the revival of classical learning uh, the there's a renaissance there was a renaissance spirit of rational and scientific quest so to sum up the age of elizabeth was a time of intellectual liberty when we feel that the um, renaissance was a renaissance was at its height of growing intelligence and comfort among all classes of unbounded patriotism and of peace at home and abroad such an age of great thought and great action appealing to the eyes as well as to the imagination and intellect neither poetry nor the story can express the whole man his thought of feeling action and the resulting character hence in the age of elizabeth literature turned instinctively to the drama and brought it rapidly to the highest stage of we can say it has reached the highest stage of development so uh, during its peak time that is during the reign of elizabeth renaza was a manifestation of new life and uh, outburst of virtuous Flor- floridity after restraints and withering asceticism of the middle ages the renaissance was in was an essence an intellectual rebirth one of the writers joseph anthony mazio in his renaissance and revolution quotes renaissance was a process of recovery of past achievements a search of pristine ideals of course much that new was coming 
to birth during the renaissance but it was validated not as a fresh creation but as the resurrection of some ancient teaching institution moral or aesthetic idea so uh, it was an age in which men lived intensely thought intensely and wrote intensely uh, jacobian period jacobian period marked the phase of sobriety and realism the mind descended from the height of exaltation to the solid earth underfoot high hope yielded place to despair and melancholy passion for life gave way to brooding upon death ever the corpses in the grave undergoing process of decay and purification so this is all about english renaissance when england reached its height because it was an era of peace of economic prosperity of stability of liberty and of great exploration in the age of elizabeth all doubt seems to vanish from english history thank you